All right, for more on the escalating unrest in Israel and the occupied West Bank, I'm joined by Diana Butu, a former advisor to the Palestinian Liberation Organization, former legal advisor to the Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas. She also worked as a legal advisor on peace negotiations, negotiations between Israeli organizations. Uh, Diana, good afternoon to you. Uh, thank you for being with us. Uh, there, there are a lot of issues going on. Chaos is a word to describe what's going on in the region in which you live. Let's start with the Israeli side. Israel's new cabinet contains several ultra ultra-Orthodox right-wing officials who back illegal settlement construction, including uh, the supporters of a radical rabbi branded a terrorist by the United States who was assassinated in 1990. Uh, according to The Washington Post, I'm going to quote from them, top officials include Itamar Ben-Gavir, a far-right provocateur from the religious Zionism movement who lives in the hardline Kiryat Arba settlement near Hebron, where residents have harassed and assaulted Palestinians for decades. A leader in the settler movement, ben and Gavir built a legal career defending Jewish extremists who are accused of terrorism and hate crimes, end quote. That's from the Washington Post. Ben Gavir is a government minister right now. Yes, absolutely, Ali. Uh, first, thanks for having me. Yes, it's not just the Benik Veers, it's the Smotriches, the entire government. What this government has said is that they've put first and foremost, and in fact, it's their only platform, is to try to just build and expand settlements and to attack Palestinians. They don't have any other agenda other than to make life very difficult to continue the ethnic cleansing process and uh, and to make sure that Netanyahu is forever to stay in power. So. We with a, with a minister like Ben Gvir in place or somebody like Smotrich, who just last week said that an entire Palestinian town should be wiped off the map after settlers torched it. Uh, this is what it's like to be living as a Palestinian in this country, to always be afraid that that at any moment in time, they will get rid of you, they will ethnically cleanse you or they will kill you. Let's talk about this town you're talking about. The Palestinian Authority itself is suffering from a pervasive credibility problem. You and I have talked about this over the years. According to Khalil Shikaki, who's the director of the Palestinian Center for Policy and Survey, who spoke with The New Yorker, when hundreds of Israelis did what you said, they, they, they torched the West Bank town of Huara two weeks ago, there was no Palestinian Authority presence to be seen, despite that being an area that was under control of the PA. Uh, they, they write in the New Yorker, the Palestinian police should have immediately come to the assistance of the Palestinians who were in that area. Instead, they abandoned the town. This is just one example. During the past decade, there have been hundreds, if not thousands, of cases where settlers have attacked Palestinians in towns that are supposed to be protected by the Palestinian police. What's going on in, in that situation? You know, it's a really excellent question, Ali. The, the big problem is that the Palestinian Authority was established simply to be able to be an arm of Israel's military occupation. And when we see that settlers are attacking, the Palestinian Authority does nothing. When we see that Israel is attacking, the Palestinian Authority does nothing. Moreover, we also see that sometimes it's the Palestinian Authority itself that is carrying out uh, repressive acts and imprisoning people. So for Palestinians, there is absolutely no nobody who is protecting us, not by the from the army, not from the settlers, and not even our own government. And this is why Palestinians so, are so vulnerable, because we're not only living under Israeli military rule, but there is nobody here to protect us. What What is the fate of the thing that every American talks about, and that is a two-state solution? People who don't even read much into this say, well, I definitely support a two-state solution. Our administration says it supports a two-state solution. Increasingly, there are very few people in, in Israel and Palestine who even support a two-state solution anymore. You know, Ali... The problem is, is that it's impossible to have a two-state solution. You can't have two states when there are three-quarters of an, a million settlers that are living on pr approximately 60 percent of the West Bank land. There has never been an Israeli government that has taken the decision to dismantle, to decolonize, to bring the settlers back. But instead, each and every Israeli government has taken the decision to build and expand more settlements. This particular government has not only taken a decision to build and expand more settlements, but they say it is their absolute right. And we saw within the first 48 hours of the government um, coming forward that they announced that they were going to build more settlements. They legalized nine new ones, and they've already announced thousands of new housing units for, for settlers. So the two-state solution is only possible if there is a, a political decision to 
take these settlers out of the West Bank. But as it stands, Israel doesn't want to do it. And the United States continues to do absolutely nothing. Instead, it backs these settlers. Deanna, you are in an unusual uh, situation. You are a minority uh, in Israel as a Palestinian. You are also an Israeli citizen. Uh, some people have pointed out that the pro-democracy protests in Israel have curiously, they're, they're anti-government, but they've left out the issue of Palestinian rights. Tell me a little about that. Yes, absolutely. You know, we uh, if you look at the current composition of who is going out to these protests, it's a mix. But the vast majority are people who are carrying Israeli flags. These are the vast majority still support the Israel's military occupation. And when the simple issue of raising Israeli apartheid is raised, they keep telling Palestinians not to raise that issue. So on the one hand, they're asking for democracy. But on the other hand, they don't see how for Palestinians this has been a dictatorship and will conti continue to be a dictatorship because that's what it is to live under Israeli military rule. It means that you don't have the right to, to choose your own government, to be able to decide your own future, but instead you're living under the thumb of another government. And so uh, even if you look at the current composition of this government, out of the hundred, uh, out of this uh, Knesset, of this parliament, out of the 120 members of the parliament, 110 of them support the occupation. It's only 10, and those 10 happen to be Arab, uh, that don't support the occupation. It's only those 10 that support equal rights for Palestinians. And so all of this uh, pro-democracy movement is simply a movement to make sure that they're not the ones who are affected by Israel's authoritarian rule, by Israel's dictatorship. They don't care if it impacts Palestinians. Deanna, thanks for taking time with us. I know you're always busy and on your way somewhere and you stopped in your car to talk to us. Deanna Butu is a former advisor to the Palestinian Liberation Organization. She's a former legal advisor to the Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas.